infinite promise of making human contact easier became a nightmare and lead us to antisocial behaviors. We have become immaterial beings uh, with a constant feeling of hyper-connection. The age of consumer euphoria is over and the sharing economy and lack of ownership are starting to bloom. From brands like Airbnb to clothing rental services, fluidity became a new norm from our career paths to our gender, and self-definitions are so passé. As well, data economics, harvests and colonizations are all the rage. Pantone is choosing living color as the color of the 2019 year to raise awareness uh, of coral leaf bleaching and climate change. Private companies wants to colonize the cosmos and create our new home at, on Mars without proper scientific research. Are we doomed or blessed to live in a world where algorithms make decisions instead, instead of a human? How can we avoid being predictable to the algorithm and stay a modern rebel. Even if in our times we might be living in information democracy and can Google absolutely everything, would we be discussing blockchain news with a grocery seller? Obviously, technological development has provided uh, value in our daily life, but at the same time, many new problems. Most of those are issues are connected to our mental health, although few are physical. Some examples are digifrenia, term invented by Douglas Rushkoff, describing mental disorder caused by constant bombardment of digital input. People suffering from digifrenia have dual personalities, the real self and the virtual one, existing in a single moment. This insane mental split creates lacks of control over life and integrity or objectivity. The other one is phobia of, singular, of technological singularity. It's a fear of hypothetical circumstances in, in which AI, machines, and technology in general were, would take over uh, our humanity. So be careful. Robots are coming, and they know no mercy, emotions, and peace. Deaths and serious injuries related to selfies. These are accidents happening during of our, or after taking a selfie photo. Of course, some of those accidents are connected to falling from buildings or cliffs, few to electric shocks, but most intense, in my opinion, are firearms. For example, in 2015, a 19 years old from Houston, uh, died after trying to take an Instagram selfie while holding a loaded gun to his head. He accidentally fired the gun and shot himself in the throat. Recently, we entered a completely new epoch of Anthropocene. After 12,000 years of quite stable and calm epoch, let's call it geological vacations, Holocene. The term Anthropocene came from the ancient Greek word Anthropos, meaning human. Central to the understanding of this new epoch is that humans have become the predominant force of change on Earth and that the nature is modified 
to such, a, such an extent that is no longer exist any kind of natural state. It has consequences for the future, for existence and for the evolution of humankind, fauna and flora. We not only modified the Earth's surface by building towns, cities and roads, but we developed more and more sophisticated materials, devices and tools that are not fully recyclable. The estimated full weight of everything we have ever built and manufactured is around 30 trillion tons. All of this survived in rocks for millions of years as technofossils. Imagine geologists in the future examining the layers of technofossils. They will see evidence of our sudden impact on the planet, including fossil non-melting plastics and layers, both of carbons from buildings and fuels, and of radioactive particles from nuclear tests and explosions. We can already observe these layers of rocks forming nowadays. A mixture of beach sediments, lava dust and molten plastic create completely new types of stones called plastic glomerates. Um, first notice in 2006 on Hawaiian Beach. The Anthropocene is not only the, a time of man-made disruption, it's also a moment of a painful self-awareness in which we are becoming conscious of our planetary force. We are not only driving global warming and ecological destruction, we are aware that we are. Now, doing just anything is an environmental question or, in a, or an issue. Coral bleaching is not just occurring on the reefs. It's happening whenever you switch on the air conditioning. Long story short, everything is in, in, interconnected. Another important topic in Anthropocene is space colonization. As galaxy becomes more commercial and exploration more accessible, the power shifts to private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, or Rocket Lab, who lead the research of setting Mars or deploying terraforming pods on planets across the galaxy. Scientists hope that by 2027, we will be able to make it happen. Look, on the Martian surface, there are currently six robotic rovers, constantly collecting data and images. But funnily enough, no human has stepped on this planet yet, so making the Martian colony revolution in few years still seems like a hardcore fantasy. To live on the red planet, terraforming must take place. Terraforming is a hypothetical process of changing the planet's conditions to make it habitable for Earth, plants, animals, and obviously human. Speculations in the past were that when we will heat up Mars, ice on the planet will melt and release carbon dioxide, creating a thicker atmosphere that is breathable for us, protects us from radiation, and allow liquid water to remain on the surface. Basically, we need, we need to do what we do the best, another global warming. And voila, it might only take 10,000 years, so sorry nerdy dreamers, it will possibly not happen in our lifetime. Ironically enough, before even functioning in a space, we damaged it. Space junk has been accumulating um, since the first human-made satellite, Sputnik 1. 
This junk, known as space debris, includes pieces of rockets, unused satellites and bolts, garbage bags, screwdrivers, and even spatula. More than 527,000 no man-made fragments spin around our planet. All of those junk is floating faster than a speeding, speeding ballet, damaging satellites, space stations, and telescopes. As the skies become more crowded with scientific and commercial orbiters, all nations need to rethink the growing problem. The International Space Station is the only example of coordinated effort made by many competing organizations to develop standards and work together on a project in a space that benefits the whole society. Joy Ito, director of Meet Media Lab, came up with the term anthropocosmos, based on anthropocene defi definition. As we are painfully aware of the human influence on, on the Earth, we are also accelerating into the epoch of space exp exploration on a mass scale. Anthropocosmos is a term that captures the idea of how we must responsibly consider our role in the universe. Some scientists have suggested recently that we need a new generation of space planners, space architects, and in general, space ethics to protect the galaxy from our dark, dark side. The manifold of those changes feels gloomy, doesn't it? Taking responsibility for other generations might feel harsh. The pressure is real, but if we had the power to change the universe that has existed for a billion years, maybe with a little bit of an effort and luck, we still can reverse the trajectory of destruction. We are still the same species, just with better knowledge and technology. So why not make a positive impact with our powers? And just then, maybe some of us might not want to escape the Mars. In recent years, design has become more expressive, political and polemical, and willing to reflect social and ecological changes. Before, art only had the privilege to raise those subjects. But nowadays, designers in every field can define their own views and have more control over their work. Design used to be thought as a styling device connected to commercialism. Despite the environmental or ethical conditions, in the 21st century, designers are no longer so easily ignored. We have a huge potential to make a contribution to society by communicating important issues to a larger audience. The Prada Green Nylon Project is crossing five continents to connect with upcycling initiatives that are turning harmful waste yeah, into pristine you. new products. We need designers to show us how to use technology in a positive uh, and constructive way. From AI to cryptocurrencies, we have only saw what we only saw in science fiction movies in the past have become part of our daily lives. Our status can be a, can be a meaningful uh, catalyst for change, and we can become the architects of the future. Nike, the second largest uh, apparel company, is not a newbie to sustainability, from supply chain to, to production.
This wash recycled 6.4 billion plastic bottles since 2010. It's using 75% of renewable energy across, uh, ac across its own facilities and is sourcing environmentally friendly cotton and is pushing materials pro production to the level of flying kit that is made out of recycled polyester. Brand's approach is there is no innovation without sustainability. Nike made a manifesto this year that includes an aim for the future. Zero footwear manufacturing waste, 100% sustainable contract factories, 100% renewable energy by 2025, and carbon neutrality by 2050. This scenario sounds utopian. However, maybe it's possible? Nevertheless, it's important to note that the that there does not exist any age of brand without its signs. Every giga brand trying to make more thoughtful, uh, trying to be more thoughtful about environment had its downs and made some mistakes in the past. Some really loud and connected to the child labor, for example. And fashion is still the second biggest sector of production that is harmful to the environment. Despite the fact that the massive brands are trying to make an effort, young people too have produced huge initia initiatives. Boysland, a Dutch teenager, founded an, the Ocean Cleanup a non-profit organization that is trying to fight the biggest pollution problem by clearing the mass of plastic trash. They designed a system with a 600-meter long and 3-meter long floater with skirt attached below that is moving through the waters of the ocean, collecting plastics from the water and recycling it into lasting products. It is also extremely safe for the marine life. In just five years, the ocean cleanup has already removed 50% of the Great Pacific garbage path. The practices we've just heard about are bold and can feel overwhelming. When somebody would like to create something personal and independent that is valuable to sustainability, but it's a ripple effect. Change can also happen bit by bit. Italian duo Studio Forma Fantasma created a stunning project called Aura Streams focused on the, on the relationship between design and digital waste, called e-waste. The project was developed over two years of research and compromises different media, including physical objects, video do documentary, and animations. They, they have in, interviewed recycled, recyclers, activists, scientists, policymakers, and other experts. Based on collected information, they created a series of objects that include a table, desk, chair, bin, cabinet, and screens, each made from uh, materials and components constructed from recycled digital junk. All of these pieces were designed for um, use in an imaginary office and this decision was not random. The office environment, explains designers, is where modern design principles are most visible. Only one third of digital trash is officially collected nowadays. Aura is the term describing rock from which any valuable metal can be delivered. According to Studio Forma Fantasma, by 2018, 
uh, the largest metal reserves will no longer be below the ground. They will be above in our smartphones, uh, devices, and other forms of wealth, which will stream freely across the universe and create a continuous borderless continent. Instead of sourcing aura from the earth, it will be remined from millions of tons of e-waste that the world produce, what the studio named as above ground mining. The project contains special recommendations both for policymakers and companies, but also for designers and engineers who are ignorant of the complications they are creating for the recycling process with their creations. Italian duo clearly believes that designers have the power to make products that last longer, are much more easier to recycle. Design too many times is interpreted as styling to tool, they say. If designers operate with centering framework, it's not necessary uh, because of, of their own choices. Studio Forma Fantasma is encouraging all people connected to the process of technological production to prioritize recyc recyclability uh, in their work by taking such actions like improving labeling parts avoiding the use of glue to fix different materials together, ensuring that batteries and other charmful components are easy to access and remove, and many, many more. Our streams is an important body of work, starting a wider conversation with the creative world about the ethics of designing non-recyclable products and about e-waste. With this multidisciplinary uh, series, Studio Forma Fantasma addresses a complex issue, su suggesting that design can be po a positive force for a global change. The natural and mechanical realms are both valuable to me. Fauna and flora is the best visual stimulus, and computers allow us to play with their features in a distinctive way. I constantly need to be around both, but cannot be far more of one over the other. In that sense, I conceptually love the narratives connected to both nature and new technologies. This is my way to find a balance between the natural and mechanical realm, even if that sounds cliche. Sometimes commercialism understands freedom without limits. Together with Gentle Monster, we created a, a project that was escaping the constraints of universal branding rules. Advertorial, in which you can destroy product, is a rare gem. Sunglasses in this, project, in this project are melting like liquefied plastic pulp. The dissonance between imagination and typical commerce is blurring. This is another example of the project created with Gentle Monster, Selfridges, and Dover Street Market New York. It's also quite abstract and shows that commercialism can be more can be more art focused. One of my projects can be an example of possible coexistence of design, commercialism, and activism. For Remova, critically endangered amphibians have been both brought uh, to the forefront in one animation. While axolots are almost extinct species in the natural habitat, they are common as pets in Asia, 
but still not widely known around the world. By using them as a principal character in an advertorial for highly known brand, more people might become curious about axolots. Nowadays, there is huge demand for sustainability, not only in the fields of production, but also in the visual communication. 3D fills the gap between product production and image making. In an era when we, as a society, are producing way too much waste. If, what if we can visualize completely new products or objects and sell to customers before it was even manufactured? When brands are launching new products, it's easier and safer to use 3D. What is more, some designs would not be possible in reality, but we, with 3D technology, they can be shown in a photorealistic way. With Etienne Garajon, we created two fictional jewelry brands, Shimo and Ama. Together, we brought to life pieces that never existed in reality and showed them to the world as, as an advertorial. We developed absolutely every detail from the start to finish, from the story behind the brand, its name and logo, the emotions each piece of jewelry should evoke, and the ultimate jewelry designs that would physically represent the brand's narrative and values. In this way, we disrupted manufacturing and visual communication process. It's a stunning chain reaction. Sensibility helps imagination. Imagination helps creativity. And creativity helps the progress. Sen sensibility separates us from machines and other animals on the indivi individual and collective level. Sensibility will benefit us as we look speculatively towards the future that we are building. Sensibility will help us to create a more responsible, sustainable, sustainable world. Is it possible that our new attitude would be stay sensitive? Thank you.